Today, we'll begin introducing concepts of color and how to work with it. Historically, artists have used color to create visual impact in their paintings. Color can enhance the appeal of your subject matter, dictate mood of the work, or just be the focal point of your painting. In order to use color, we have to understand it. Color can be broken into the following characteristics. The first is hue. The easiest way to think of it is to think of the generic name of the color. There's red, blue, yellow, green, orange, and purple. The second is value, or light to dark. We discussed this in a prior video, and if you painted the blue and white scale along with us, you've already dabbled in value. If not, check out our video on value. Finally, saturation. Saturation is the intensity of the color. The color you get right out of the tube would be in its most saturated form. Mixing colors into it will desaturate or muddy that intensity. Understanding these three concepts, we can start to discuss color relationships. You may have heard terms like primary, secondary, or even complementary. I like your face, it's really glowing. I like your shirt. Stop it, you're gonna make me blush. On camera. But not like that. These are all color relationships. Primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. They're primary colors because they cannot be created by mixing other colors together. Secondary colors are purple, orange, and green. You get these colors by mixing the primary. Blue and red mixed together create purple, red and yellow make orange, and blue and yellow green. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite to each other on the color wheel. That simple relationship typically consists of a primary and a secondary, and putting them together can do some pretty cool things. Mixing them together is a way to desaturate one or the other, but side by side they create a visual intensity. Now let's apply what we've talked about to a painting. For this painting, you'll need one simple object, a direct light source, your white paint, and a complementary pair. Brett and Mustafa will be painting this fancy towel. Brett will use blue and orange, and Mustafa will use red and green. You can use yellow and purple, but yellow has a narrow value range from light to dark, so it's tricky for your first time. <laughs> It's painting time! Alright, so we're in the studio. We have our towel set up, ready to go and lit. We have our paper up on our board, taped off um, all four edges, and we have all our supplies ready to go. Remember, if you're a messy painter like myself, don't forget your drop cloth. So I will be working in acrylics. I have my blue and orange paint ready to go. I'm gonna start first with a really quick outline of the form. I've decided to crop in on uh, my composition a little bit. I see an area um, that has a little bit more contrast a little bit more um, movement that I find interesting that I'm gonna try and tackle. And then I'm going to be using paint initially that's very watered down so I can, um, uh, so it's very fluid and I could cover most of the white of the paper. I don't wanna get hung up on any details at first. Other than that, I'm just gonna kinda wing it. Kinda, kinda like my life probably explains why I'm making YouTube videos and crippling my sense of self-esteem. But hey, uh, you should uh, like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. That might help. Okay, so I'm at a stage now where I have the painting laid in. Um, I was focused solely on thinking about color in terms of value and looking at where's the darkest darks in my composition and where are the lightest lights. And that's solely what I tried to focus on and bring out. Um, and then I went in with a little bit of these in-between midtones um, just to kind of round out the composition. But as you can see, it's really loose. Um, you know, nothing's really happening. No 
true detail, but it's still somewhat, um, you know, in line with what we're seeing visually as far as lights and darks go. So the local color would be the color of the towel, which happens to be blue. Um, inventive color, though, is when we apply colors that aren't on the, the object we're painting. So for example, I'm using the orange and I'll be interspersing orange in with the blue. So when working with both of these colors, be sure to try and integrate them um, so they work together. You don't want to isolate them so you have an orange pocket and a blue pocket of strictly tonal values. Get both of these colors working together um, as you see here. All right, I'm getting pretty close to the end here. I'm just gonna wrap up and then we should be good. Now for our segment. Art Soul. Hey y'all, and welcome back to Art Soul. We're here with Brett and Mustafa and myself, and we're gonna talk about color today. So um, I'm gonna do just jump right into it. Uh, Brett, would you like to talk about how your painting of your towel went. Sure, I'll start. Um, so uh, with this painting, I was working with two colors, orange and blue, and the, the goal that I was hoping to uh, communicate to the viewer or show is how these two colors work together. You want to integrate them when you're starting to work with color. A lot of the times I see beginning students, they'll isolate certain colors. So like this area might be all blue and tonally every single value of blue. But then over here we get same thing, but in orange. And so you kind of create these isolated pockets, which causes some distractions. Um, when you're working with color, even at first, really try to just integrate it. Um, get both colors working together. Both the blue can act as a light value and the dark value and same with the orange. Um, can you show us ex an example on your painting of where there is good integration of those two? Sure. I mean, so looking at this edge, you kind of have your, your lightest light going right here, and then it folds over into your mid values, which is your orange, and then even to your uh, next darker value, which is the blue, into a really deep blue. Um, so you kind of have this structure where it's working together. You can kind of see the same kind of transitions up here. Um, so it, it's important to try and get those colors working together. Okay, great. And I actually like, also, you talked about that transition of the actual plane of the towel itself, but also even in this shadowy part, you've mixed the colors and um, desaturated them and they've become darker and almost a little more exciting than just putting in maybe a black or a gray. They've made their own gray, so very cool. Um, Mustafa, you were going to talk a little bit about your process um, because it's a little different from how Brett does it. Why don't you go ahead and explain? Right, so whenever I start uh... A painting I usually pre-mix a palette so as you can see with this palette that will pop up on your screen magically from editor Mustafa um, I have mixed a complementary pair palette if you'd like to see how a palette like that is mixed we can show you in the next episode maybe let us know in the comments 
But essentially I worked with the red and green. I used my white to make um, the values first on either side. And then I pre-mixed this second row for both the red and green um, colors that had a little bit with the red row that it had a little bit of the green mixed in with the green row it had a little bit of the red mixed in. And so for me, that's just, it's a strategic way to approach a painting. It helps me um, see the values I need and get to it fast. I probably spent about just as much time on mine that um, Brett did, but I did a little bit more prep work um, to begin with. Right, okay, so, and if you were to look at this, at your painting, um, is there any part that is right out of the tube, highly saturated, fully saturated paint? Or is it all mixed? Um, I would say everything is mixed. Maybe this comes, this little green here comes a little close to that. Um, for me, it was just this like, the surface that the towel was on, it was just this nice little like, magical moment within the shadows that was just like really, um, uh, that was sort of, to me, it's saturated. It, it said it needed to be a little saturated, even though, and that's the thing, like even though a color can be um, within a shadow area or the dark area of a painting, that doesn't mean it can't have this sort of like life in it or this sort of sense of like brilliance. Uh, richness think, to it. Yeah. yeah, richness. And I think that's for me, like this moment speaks out for that um, or calls out to that, that the thing we're describing. Another moment for me also would be just sort of this little edge. I mean, I could have easily just applied that sort of same color in, in other areas, but that's the thing, you're, you're painting, you're the maker, you get to choose where those colors go. And, we're just, that's going back to what Brett was talking about with inventive color and local color. And so you're inventing quite a bit. Yeah, and one thing I like about both of these um, is that part that you pointed out, even if we're just paying attention to value and like what are the lightest parts, what are the darkest parts, even the lightest parts transition in color. So even, even if they were maybe almost equally as bright in the um, actual painting themselves, they're different in color, and that just brings another le a level of kind of life to a still life. So you are the artist, you are making those choices, and that's very important. Um, if I were to do uh, a painting like this, I think I would have a little more of the fresh out of the tube, highly saturated color. That's just kind of a preference that I have, um, and it shows that strong co contrast when they're next to each other. Um, I, I mean, I mix my paints as well, but I just think I like that kind of really, you know, primary or just like elementary color out of it. So that would be what I, where I would have gone in my direction. Um, but yeah, these are great. They're both, you know, two different artists, but they have that same sort of quality of mixing and levels of saturation and paying attention to the object in front of them. That's the whole point of it, right? Another thing to add is to, um, with what Polo just said about colors right out of the tube, he works that way, but he's still mixing, you know, to a degree. And that's a, that's the thing, you know, when, when you're first starting out, you have this tendency to pull out, you know, a red, blue, or yellow, whatever, and just to go with it. But mix your colors. Uh, it really sh makes you stand out from somebody who just started. There's nothing wrong with throwing those colors in, but, you know, there there is a lot more nuance. There's there's a lot more you can pay attention to that will, that will make your painting feel like it was yours. It's it's an original piece by you. So mix your colors. There's there's a lot in there. There's a lot of fun in there. Absolutely, and uh, it shows a lot of range, which is very important. So mixing your colors is essential. I don't want you to think that I don't do that. <laughs> okay, um, Brett. I notice also that you have a lot of interesting brush marks here. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, in I mean, in the video you. Kind of portrayed maybe some exaggerations on mark making maybe maybe i mean i'll be honest that goes on in the studio a lot for me <laughs> um but there is a, a point i want to get at and um you know when you're starting out it's mark making probably isn't the first concern of yours but as you progress um you know if you keep holding the brush the same way like a pencil or something like that you're going to get the same result every time you use um the brush and so sometimes we really have to trick ourselves as artists into doing something to get new marks or um, something new and exciting. And really the, the way you go about that is endless. It's whatever works. And sometimes it's going to these weird extremes to, to break out of those habits. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll 
talk more about mark making, but it's something to, I think, think about and be aware of, because sometimes there's certain areas in a painting that you can't paint the same way as you do another area. So holding the brush different might help with that. And I think that's just something you do when you're starting. Explore the different ways you uh, you put paint on on your paper or canvas. When you're when you're first starting, that's that's experimenting is the way to go. Um, as you get further along into your sort of career or um, progression as an artist, you'll eventually start to settle on what feels right for you. And we're not saying you should always be mixing it up. But, you know, do do that a lot in the start. See what works for you. Absolutely. In your experience, Brett, are there any body parts that are off limits <laughs> in holding brushes? Or is it anything goes? I stand by my words. Anything goes. Anything goes. You heard it here first. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time. Compliment war. Take four. I like the smoothness of your face. <laughs> Compliment war, take five. I like how you have one nose hair hanging out of your nose. <laughs>